Good news, debt freedom may be closer than you think. Hey, with uncertainty in so many areas of our life right now, honestly, this is the time to become debt free. So if you've been thinking about paying off all of those lingering loans, now is the time to really push in and go for it. We're going to share some ideas with you today that will help make it quicker and easier. Now we wanna encourage you to stick with us to the very end of the video because there are some of our steps we're about to give that you might find surprising and it's ways to think about debt repayment that you may have never considered before. Hey, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median where every week we bring you videos on how to practice frugality. In case you don't know our story, we paid off our first house in five years, became debt free, and bought our current house in 2010, mortgage free, and we had four children and were living under the average annual income. So the steps we're gonna share with you today, these come from our real life experience. So let's get started. You've got debt, you want to alleviate that debt, what do you do? First step. You need to know exactly what you owe. We like to sort of approach this step using um, those, those words that you were taught like a detective would use. <laughs> they would ask questions about who, what, where, when, why, and how. These are also the same questions that I learned to ask in college when I took journalism classes. So how do those questions relate to debt and why is it important that you relate those questions to your debt? Uh, I made a chart for you just so you can show you um, exactly what I'm talking about. So you would list all of your debts across the top of the chart and then along the sides you're going to fill in the blanks and you're going to list who do you owe what is that debt for now here's why i think this is important i think you have to own whatever it is you bought with that money so i think just having visa twenty one hundred and fifty dollars i think it's more important that you say visa twenty one hundred and fifty dollars and i bought that cool leather couch because i think that that knowing exactly what it is that you bought is going to help you to understand how not to go into debt again. Because oftentimes we'll look at that and think, either we'll think, good Lord, what did I buy with that money? <laughs> or we'll know what we bought with that money and putting it down ensures that we next time that comes around, we think, wait a minute, maybe I can do without that for a while or I can save up and I can pay cash for it. So I think owning it, part of owning it is to write down what it is you spent the money on. And you also want to know uh, when is the monthly payment due on what day of the month. That way you can track when you're going to have to pay that amount of money. Now, I think this is also important because if you owe multiple debts, sometimes what happens is they are all due like in the first week of the month or the last week of the month. If you're paid bi-weekly, you can call any one of those lenders and say, you know what, instead of it being due on the 4th, can we just move it to say the 17th? So that if you're paid bi-weekly, then part of those debts come out of that first paycheck and part of the debt repayment comes out of the second paycheck. It just makes it easier if you balance it. So if you look at across the board and know when they're all due, you can sort of balance that a little easier. Another thing you can check is when do you expect to be able to pay off that loan that you're in debt to? It's always good to be able to figure out how long you have before you're clear of that debt. And the last thing you want to know is how much do you currently owe on that debt? Now there was one word that we actually skipped and we're going to go back to it now and that word is why? Why do you want to pay off these debts? Now, whenever you have like an overriding why, it will help you to stay on track with paying off that debt when it just plain gets hard. We had a why when we were saving to pay cash for this house. Our old neighborhood was going bad really quickly. It was becoming very dangerous. So that was our why on that sheet of why we were saving as much as we possibly could in order to move out of the neighborhood. So knowing your why, it's it's almost as important, guys, as knowing exactly who you owe and how much you owe. Because that why 
keeps you on the straight and narrow. You know, a good why for paying off your debt today with inflation going up as drastic as it is, if you pay off those debts, that will help you with those payments you're having to make now to the gas station and groceries and so on that are currently rising. If you lower your debt ceiling, then you'll have more cash at hand to be able to make up the difference that inflation is costing us right now. Yeah. So do you want to sleep better at night? Do you want to mm -hmm. not wake up in the morning with that heavy feeling on your chest of, oh my gosh, I got to go through another day trying to figure out how to pay off this massive amount of debt. Those feelings, that why, that's what you need at the bottom of the page. And you know, I never liked the feeling of being in debt mm -hmm. and owing people mm -hmm. money. I was always afraid, what if you miss a couple of payments by accident? What if something happens and you just miss them? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's always good to be out of debt. So now you can make a choice between the debt snowball or the debt avalanche. Those are two different ways of paying off your debts. Now, with the debt snowball, you're going to list all of your debts in order from the least amount owed to the most amount owed, regardless of how much the interest rate is on those debts. With the debt avalanche method, you're going to always list those items with the highest interest rate at the top of your debt list and work your way down to those with the lowest interest rate. Which one works? They both do. <laughs> Which one do we like better? Well, we like the snowball one the best. And here's why. In the snowball method, you're going to pay off the smallest amount of debts first. So let's just say you have 15 debts and the top five are fairly small. You can pay those off quickly and clear those off the plate so then you can focus on the rest of them. I think it's a great way to see quick progress in what you're doing. If you've paid off debt, which have you used? The debt avalanche or the debt snowball? Tell us which one you like best. Tell us in the comments section. Here's the third step. You're gonna find extra money in your budget for debt repayment, even if you think there's no extra money in your budget. <laughs> One thing you can do is put a temporary hold on categories that aren't totally necessary to be working on right now. Another thing you can do is what we've talked about several times, and that's the 10% exercise. So you're going to take all of your budget categories, write them down on a piece of paper, and then set a timer for 20 minutes. Grab your partner, and then you're literally going to write down as many ways as you can think of that you could possibly reduce each budget category by just 10%. You would be amazed at how many ideas you can corporately come up with that will help you to spend less and save more every month. Another way to find some money in your budget is to lower your bills. Now, how do they lower their bills? Okay, you're going to start out with the obvious, guys. You're going to start out with cable TV. If you have one of the expensive sort of cable TV selections um, every single month, then you're going to go with one of the lower price packages. You can um, check into lowering your car insurance, your home insurance. Also check into lowering your phone bill. There are some obvious areas that have some wiggle room that you can call that provider and say, can I get a lower bill? Okay, number four, and I think this is a very effective one, is to too. get an accountability partner. Now, if you have to give an account to somebody for all the money that you're spending, it will make you think twice about what you're doing with it. So are we saying that one person is a boss and the other person has to check in with them for permission all the time? No, that's not what accountability partner is. In fact, it does work both ways. Absolutely. So if I'm wanting to spend something, I'll get with Hope and say, what do you think about this? And we'll make a corporate decision on it. And the same with her. If she wants to purchase something, she'll come to me and say, Larry, I have this item that I'm considering that I think would be good for our home or whatever she might need it for. And we'll talk it over. Accountability just means it gives you a chance to reconsider the amount of money that you're spending on something. It also gives you a chance to remember that you are working together as a team. So that's what accountability is. We always have like an upper limit. If we're going to go out to dinner with some coworkers or lunch with coworkers. We're not necessarily going to check in with one another. But if we're going to spend like 50 bucks on something, we're definitely going to check in with one another on that amount of money. Or if I'm going to buy something that's more of a want than a need, then I'll I'll check in with Hope and, and we'll, we'll talk it over. She might find a better way for me to buy the item by getting coupons or going online and, and grabbing some other method of of purchasing it. So it's always good. And this way, it, it keeps your relationship with your partner in good harmony too. 
All right, now you know what debts you owe. You have picked debt snowball or debt avalanche, method of repayment, you are on the road, you have cut your expenses, but there's one more thing that you really need to do. You might be at a point in your budget where there just isn't enough mm -hmm. money coming in from the resources that right. you have at hand. So it might be time to bring in extra money. Well, how can you do that? Well, you can look around and find out in your home, is there things that you don't need that can be sold? Can you get a part-time job? Can you work overtime? There are so many different ways to bring in extra income. You could also consider doing shift work. Sometimes when you work for a company and you work second or especially third shift, there's gonna be a premium uh, placed on that specific shift and you're gonna make a little extra money per hour just for changing the shift that you are willing to work. Also, if you're willing to come in on weekends or let your boss know that if somebody's taking a leave of absence or they're going to be gone on an extended vacation, you are more than willing to chip in and to take some of those hours. Once you let your boss know that you're ready, willing, and able to take some extra hours, a lot of times they will give them to you. Maybe you have some hidden talent that hasn't been tapped yet. And, you know, maybe you like photography. Mm -hmm. How about finding some ways to earn some money taking photographs? There's all kinds of ways to do that. There's always somebody getting married, somebody graduating. There, you know, the possibilities mm -hmm. are endless. Look at what you like to do and what you're good at doing, and maybe there's a way to monetize that talent. Yeah, in short, we're talking about finding a side hustle, something mm -hmm. that you can do to bring in a little extra money. We also had something we did um, when Larry was laid off that we like to call gig work. So this is work that comes around real sporadically. Uh, there was a multimedia company in town that occasionally needed somebody that would pay, I don't know, $15 an hour for him to go, you know, be a gaffer, which means that you ran all the cables and you set up the lights and basically you were the behind the scenes guy for the shoots that they were doing. And every once in a while, they would need an extra hand. And Larry said, you know what? You need an extra hand. Let me know. And if it's in my schedule, then I can say yes and come do that. So it comes very sporadically, but it, it can kind of be a really good source of side income if, um, if you're able to take on gigs like that. And, you know, another thing that I did is I actually went back to one of my old jobs yeah. and got some part-time work working at the public television station. So I actually did some on-air work for them, and that helped kind of supplement our income. Now, Larry mentioned this just a little bit earlier when we began talking about bringing in extra income, but I want to bring it to the forefront once again, and that is there may be some items around your house you no longer need that you can sell. Now, we did an extensive video and we gave our top 10 tips for reselling items and getting the best price possible out of them. We have very, very successfully resold things over the years. And so if you want to take a look at that video, Larry gave some fantastic tips on how to photograph your item and make it in its best light as possible. So go ahead and take a look at that video. We'll make sure that it's listed in the description of this video. The next item you might find surprising, and that is to track your progress. Yeah. You know, if you write something down, you write down a goal, yeah. you write down how you're doing, you have a 70% more chance to accomplish that goal. Hey, if you need some help in tracking your debt payoff goals, we actually have a set of free goal trackers. There'll be a link to that in the description of this video, and you can request your absolutely free copy. Now, if you want some more help from us, there's a video right over there that is going to give you more help when it comes to practical frugality. Give it a watch next. And if you want to go in debt for a good cause, get an <laughs> e-bike. It doesn't. It can't work that in. I tried.